Hey everybody, uh, just testing my audio levels. Ooh, uh, welcome back to uh, Northern Lion Plays The Binding of Isaac Reber. There we go, I think that'll be better. Now, many people, more professional than myself, would probably put that in its own separate video, but I, you know, I'm gonna build this as a little bit of behind the scenes coverage of how I choose when to start recording an Isaac episode. We have to go with Eve, don't we? Man. We've had a lot of uh, not so fantastic Eve runs lately. I'm gonna look at. I'm gonna go for this seed no matter what it is. I just wanted to see what was in that room to get my hopes up one way or the other. Um, our seed X L S P Nate Forza. There we go. Whore of Babylon, dead bird, of course, and then the very welcome addition of the pinking shears. I have to admit. I am very, very excited to have the pinking shoes. I think those are one of the uh, best spacebar items in the game, at least from an offensive standpoint. And I'm excited to use them because it really gives us a great chance of, well, A, surviving, and that might not seem like it's that big of a deal, but, you know, we only start with 2 HP, and we're on the the cellar, which means we could be going up against a, an asshole enemy. It could be haunts. Haunt probably, on average, won't do uh, enough damage to kill us by himself, but who knows, uh, you know, with, with help from some of these earlier rooms, it's possible. Uh, and moreover, it means on the next floor, if I can just hide over some rocks on the boss fight, I'm pretty sure that uh, Pinking Shears can just finish the job by itself, which is awesome. I'm not gonna sweat that damage too much. Uh, the addition of this battery here basically means that if I wanted to, I could use Pinking Shears to maybe pick up a consumable, or uh, to clear out a room that's particularly annoying. Which is not this room. This room, you know, slightly tedious, but not particularly uh, terrible. There we go. One's already dead. What do we need to make an Eve run work? Eve is, uh, well, in my opinion, one of the more versatile characters in the game. Not that that's necessarily necessarily a compliment. That's uh, the best compliment I can give Eve is that she has Horror of Babylon, which does mean that she can make a, a low HP run work maybe with a little bit more uh, acumen than your your average character, maybe. We'll see this. We're fighting the haunt. I mean, I was going to use Pinking Shears here regardless, but uh, it, it's very nice to have Pinking Shears for a boss that is largely pretty annoying. Now, the AI on the Shears, like the, the Meat Boy that gets generated as a result of the Shears, is straight up garbage. It goes for targets that don't even take damage, but it makes up for it by doing a stupid amount of damage itself, as you can see right there. Don't let yourself get tricked into thinking that was Dead Bird doing anything at all. Now you might be thinking, Northern Lion, we should probably pick this up just in case we encounter a shitty room, but Northern Lion, why don't you go pick up some extra HP there? I really like being in the Whore of Babylon state. If we could, I was thinking maybe we might get lucky and find a spirit heart or something and I didn't want to lower our damage for no reason. We didn't. That's okay. We got dead, or not dead bird, uh, blood clot as our item. I think blood clot is, there eh, we'll go. I think it's an acceptable item. All things considered, a pretty good first floor. You know, we got a, a damage upgrade. We're not going to be fighting the haunt on the next floor. Pinking shears and uh, two keys, which is actually pretty important. And yeah, I, I actually took my hand off my keyboard in exasperation there. Probably should have been a little bit more aggressive with the enemies that I chose to fire against there. Oh well. This is okay. There is a tinted rock here. Don't come down here, poop monster. I don't want to deal with your shit right now. There we go, a bomb for a spirit heart and yet another key. We actually could, if we get uh, lucky, or if we are feeling particularly brave, open up a golden chest on this floor. I mean, we have to find one in the first place, but if we do, you never know. I'm gonna go out on a limb and assume that our, uh, uh, our shop is probably gonna be off limits to us here. We only have one penny right now. That could change if we get a great trinket or something like that. I played a couple of normal runs, like yesterday was uh, one of the Northern Lion Live Super Shows, I played a, a normal seed, and it was like a breath of fresh air, man. Like, it, it felt like I was a... I was a god, basically. Not not to sound egotistical, but like, I could, to some extent, manipulate the game to my will, and then I played uh, some, some co-op with Kate last night on normal mode, and was like, man, it, it's a good thing, because hard mode is... Ugh, is, um... It's having an effect on my skills, I think. When I've, when I've gone back to normal, I don't think I've lost a run. Now, that could just be RNG, you know, a few of those have had Mom's Knife uh, and other such various great items, but um, I'm looking forward to the day when maybe we go back to those uh, long-term, maybe? I'm not sure. For now, let's just check out what we got inside of our item room. Halo of Flies is a great item. 
One step closer to the Lord of the Flies transformation. Not that the Lord of the Flies transformation is really very good, but... You know, it's a nice kind of synergistic benefit to getting more than one fly item. Didn't realize this floor was so large. We, uh... Probably could have justified using pinking shears on that dingle room. We didn't take damage on that dingle room, though, so I can't feel too bad about it. We've only taken damage on rooms that I probably should have been a little bit more well-equipped to deal with. Please let me fight our boss before I lose this uh, half-spirit heart, though. I would very much prefer to be in a better position. Okay, the keys are coming fast and furious. I appreciate it. I forgot that we have petrified poop, by the way, so I will go back there. There's a tinted rock over here. Um, I hate this room. It's just the worst. Get out of the l weird little five-pin bowling lane and into my car. No, seriously, though. I'm going to put a bomb... Oh, you jerk! I really thought I could sneak in there and put a bomb down before things got uh, too difficult. Don't let that spy... Well, it doesn't really matter if they hit you again. Just don't let yourself get hit a couple times on the next room. All right, this is a big moment. We're up to four cents. Don't get cocky, kid. It's Pin. Shears will absolutely destroy Pin. If it uh, manages to stand in the proper place. Yeah, there you go. Very easy. We did get a deal with the devil. I consider myself incredibly lucky to get one. You know what? I think I will take Guppy's Collar. It's not the, uh, you know, incredible item that I was hoping for, but it does allow us to permanently stay in the Whore of Babylon state. It gets us a little closer to becoming Guppy, allows us to keep our deal with the Devil Precedent, and uh, all sorts of good stuff like that. So, I'm okay with this. Plus, if we die, it will help us come back to life. Maybe. Tomo, buddy. You got us. This is a bad habit, dog. Every time I start recording, you want to jump up and chill on my desk? Why don't you just go get in the window, cat? You're blocking like half the screen. I don't even. Is there a spider in the bottom left? I can't see because of your bushy freaking tail. Get out of here. I don't care about your, you know, incredible coat of hair. Do you think I'm a prospective mate or something like that? Get out of here. Thank you. We'll we'll talk later, Tomo. Your behavior is becoming a real concern for your mother and I. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. It's I wasn't mad. I was just uh, frustrated. Okay, what are we going to do? With four keys, I think we will go to our shop. There might be a half-price item. If not, I'll try to buy a Spirit Heart, just to ensure our survival a little bit more. No half-price item and no Spirit Heart. We could buy Pinking Shears. So, by the way, in case, um... Well, we could probably get to, like, 13 cents if we bond the donation machine, but whatever. Uh, in case you, uh, were not a 100% aware, I think I talked about this in an earlier episode, but I'm not sure. What? Okay, Pandora's box does something different depending on what floor you use it on. I believe, unfortunately, uh, that Pandora's box is best used on floors, uh, that are odd-numbered. So if we could take Pandora's box down to the next floor and use it, I think we'd get two boss items. But I think it's better for us to just take it on this floor. And I think we get money or spirit hearts. Uh, we, we just get consumables. So we two keys, two bombs. For 15 cents and a key. I mean, it's not that great of a deal, but what's done is done. I don't think we need converter. I don't think we need to buy any other consumables. We're, we're set up for the shop on the next floor. So yeah, there's a, there's a table uh, of expected payouts for Pandora's box. It was over at the Binding of Isaac subreddit. If you just sort post by like top this week, it'll probably be maybe even number one amongst them. Ooh, there's uh, okay. There's a tinted rock. A little scared there momentarily. Um, yeah. So um, that that's really interesting. I'll have to take some time to actually memorize those tables. I tried to just give myself a rule of thumb, which was like if you can get Pandora's box and you can afford to just hold it for a while, you should take it down to either the uh, cathedral. At best, that's where you'll get uh, two angel items, I think. Well, Abel's not really good, but we'll take it, nonetheless. Uh, or, at the very least, if you have maybe some other item that you want to take with you, uh, eventually, or you pick one up, you can take it down to a, an odd-numbered floor, and then I believe it gives you one or two uh, boss pool items. Which is pretty good. So there's your, your little, like, completely inadequate lesson about Pandora's box, but hey... I took it anyway, and I'm not super disappointed with the payout, but certainly that's probably amongst the, the lowest ones that, that you could get there. That's okay, though. 15 cents for... You're basically getting a bomb or a key for free, if you if you want to get technical there. You know, normally two bombs, two keys, if you could even buy them, would cost you 20 cents. We got it for 15. Mind you, I didn't really want to buy 
bombs or keys, we were in a pretty good position. But hey, you know, maybe we'll uh, we'll end up coming to respect the the consumables that we got. For now, I am actually pretty pleased with this run. We have some obvious problems. We're very low on HP. That is only a problem if we don't. Are you fucking kidding me? The relics just over there for free? I think I will buy. Uh, I will buy this. And I'll, I'll buy the Spirit Heart in advance of doing what I was going to do, which is obviously picking up the Relic. And I'm just going to try to get that, yeah, and get out while we're still uh, in Invincible period there. That's a no-brainer choice. We traded a Spirit Heart for the ability to generate a Spirit Heart once every four rooms. That is an, an incredibly good deal, in case you were concerned. How terrible would it have been if somehow we had lost enough health to not be able to pick that up because it would have killed us to walk over it. That would have been so disappointing. So there's little Steven. That shows up all the time for reasons that uh, are unbeknownst to me. And cool, nothing out of that poop. But this is a, a fantastic run right now. Again, the Horde Babylon State going strong here. Uh, and, and no means with which to lose it because we continue to just never get uh, HP upgrades. But uh, all will be forgiven if they just give us a, uh, a nine lives. Thank you, Relic. There's Scapular as well, knocking out a lot of Angel items. Despite not being uh, able to access a deal with the Angel. I'm not getting too excited yet over uh, Boss Rush capabilities, by the way. By the way, people have told me, you don't actually get an item for beating Boss Rush. I know, I'm just trying to fill out the post-it notes. At first, I didn't know, actually. But now, uh, you know, I've been told and I've seen that we don't get any unlocks for it, so... I'm, I'm aware of it, but I'm still going through the motions because I want to get all of the uh, the post-it notes filled up and uh, You know boss rush is the most difficult so if I can get it out of the way more quickly it Works for me Not that it's any easier to do it quickly. It's just a you know, it's a load off your shoulders. You know if you got a If you got a big project to do if you do it right away That's gonna be a little bit less stress for you in the long run You got to do the project either way you might as well do it quickly to save yourself the stress of it and That's my philosophy of course, do as I say, not as I do. I uh, I have been known to procrastinate at times in the past. Okay. And that is our secret room. I'm actually surprised. I didn't. Oh my god, Samson's chain. I actually think this is a pretty good item. There's um, you know, some things about it that are not universally amazing, but I I kind of like it. I'm not necessarily intending on using it to kill every mushroom because I, I do kind of value the speed at which we can finish this run again boss rush is maybe on the table for us hill was bombs or key I don't like that very much but at least we can probably get another one by crushing all of these uh, mushrooms that we come across if we choose to do so anyway down to the next floor a uh, very good chance of getting a deal with the devil on this floor I should say there's a boss room uh, not red chests unfortunately ooh that's unfortunate Unfortunate. Uh, Samson's chain, by the way, cannot open those uh, those bombable chests. But we ended up picking up a bomb out of it, so I'm not overly disappointed. What I was really hoping for here was a, uh, a boss trap room that had three red chests in it. Even if we picked up one guppy item and then just a bunch of fucking troll bombs or spiders, it still would have been sweet for us. Get us a little bit closer to becoming guppy. You know, there's a there's a psychological factor to the, the guppy transformation. When you're only one item away, Especially when you're early. It doesn't mean it's gonna happen, but you can see the finish line, man. I'm not saying that makes it more likely to happen in the future, just that, you know, you can... You can imagine it happening. This is fine. There we go, good dodge there. Stay out of his uh, brimstone path. Haunt's not so bad, and once you actually start dealing some decent damage... He doesn't have that much HP either, but... You know, just keep yourself safe. We don't want umbilical cord. Petrified poop a little bit better for maybe allowing us to access our shop in the future. I didn't mean to open that uh, that golden chest. I must have done it while I was dodging. Not the end of the world. Again, I'm assuming that we can probably find a way to get another bombs or key pill at some point. So, I forgot. We took broken watch. If this works against bosses, then... Uh, well, I mean, I know it can work against bosses, but if it actually does work against our bosses... Um, that's incredible for us, and, and and I wouldn't say it guarantees us a boss fight win against every boss, but it takes us pretty dang close to the the threshold for where that becomes uh, very likely, I'd say. It also means we don't have to worry about our time for boss rush, right? But no, people told me the clock still works. The clock still ticks for boss rush, even with uh, Broken Watch. 
I think I may have, might have been instrumental in spreading misinformation about that, but to be fair, I bought Broken Stopwatch like the first day the game came out. Before many people, myself perhaps chief amongst them, knew what the hell was even happening in that in the game. So I was just making an approximation. I see a watch, I see another watch, I draw a connection between them where maybe there isn't one. That's my mistake. Alright, the husk, I mean, we're getting pretty lucky with easy boss fights. Does the does the broken watch really just work always against every boss? If so, that's ridiculous. In a great way, but ridiculous nonetheless. Alright, so we can um, create a bridge, maybe? Come on. <laughs> I was going to say, is it even worth it for one cent? Uh, speed down. We got to speed up recently. So it's not so bad. It's also not like our speed is that important. Effectively, that reduces our net value on this floor thus far to um, literally just a shot speed up. That's pretty not great. That's okay. Don't worry about it, Ruka. We'll survive nonetheless. I've been in more uh, dire situations than this before. Thank you, uh, RN Jesus plus Petrified Poop, for that dime payout there. That may give us a reasonable crack at getting a uh, shop entrance here. We have to make a decision whether it's our shop or our item room. Our shop is closer. I forgot these guys. Don't shoot at him. There we go. Absolutely acceptable. There's a second key, so we'll go to both now. It was actually almost harder to dodge through that. So I would, for 15 cents, absolutely pick up uh, the mom's key. Yeah. Passive item. Gives us extra keys. Makes our chests better in the future. I think it's pretty good. More spirit hearts. There's a nickel. We'll come back. This is going pretty well thus far. Um, I'm amazed that we've been able to keep our HP so high in spite of the fact that we have no HP and have gotten no HP upgrades over the course of this run. It's probably not an exaggeration to say that if the relic had not shown up, I would... I don't want to use harsh language. I'd probably be screwed. Let's just keep it in like, uh, you know... Fourth grade parlance. Fourth grade? You're probably saying worse shit than I, sh I say on a regular basis. I was thinking the other day, you know, this is like... I don't want that. This is like a standard, like, eight-year-old way. No offense if you're watching this and you're eight. You're mature for your age, maybe. Probably the smartest eight-year-old I know. Anyway, no, there's this one guy who got, like, a PhD from Harvard when he was eight. But, you know, that's just kind of like, don't worry about him. Um, I was thinking, I was like... Swear words to me don't make any sense. What's the point of having swear words, right? Words that you can't say. I remember in fourth grade, I got in trouble in my class because I said frig. And I don't know if that word has different connotations in um, other parts of the world. In Canada, or at least where I grew up in, in the area of Canada I grew up in, frig was basically like, you know, you want to say a bad word, but you don't. It's your defense against curse words, but I got like a little miniature, you know, in-class detention or something like that as a result of this. And I was thinking back and, you know, I hold a grudge. I was like, that's such bullshit. Why, why shouldn't a, uh, why shouldn't a second grader be allowed to say fuck, okay? And I'm not trying to like start, an, oh, you're our nation's kids, Northern Lion, our nation's kids. You're gonna corrupt them morally. Here's my hypothesis here. Everybody listen to this or everybody listening to this, has probably grown up in a situation where, as a child, swearing was discouraged. Maybe your parents swore, but you weren't allowed to because you were young. That's... I'm, I'm making a bit of a leap. Oh, this is good. I'm making a bit of a leap there, I'll admit, but I, most people that I know grew, in a, grew up in a situation where if you asked them and you were like, hey, you know, could you say fuck in your house when you were six? They'd be like, no, my mom would be like real pissed. Every single person that I know, with maybe a few exceptions, swears copiously as an adult. What's the point of the whole, like, uh, stopping kids from swearing? We say it as an adult, and when it's said as an adult, it isn't even really offensive. I guess. I'm, I'm, maybe I'm coming at this from a kind of naive or, or even overly cynical standpoint, I guess, but, uh, I don't get it. Like, it's not like we're stopping our kids from, like, when we have, like, stop smoking campaigns aimed at youth, it's so that they don't become smokers when they're adults and I'm not taking a stance in that debate at all I'm just saying you know that that's the purpose of that I think if you why are we trying to stop kids from swearing if they're just gonna swear when they're adults anyway clearly the 
you know, educational outreaches regarding cursing are just, like, they're not doing their damn job. Because every adult I know swears, and, and it's a copious part of their, uh, of their diction. Which is fine. That's the other thing, is, like, why shouldn't a child be allowed to express, you know, strong emotions? Because that's basically what, you know, cursing comes down to for the most part. I don't know, maybe it's good to have taboo words. I don't, I don't understand why, though. It, it strikes me as, like, some of the most Victorian shit of, like, all time. Like, I don't think this will happen within, uh, within our lifetimes, but I can imagine, like, a hundred years from now, they'd be like, yeah, you know, my mom spanked me because I said fuck, and then, you know, we'll be, uh, we'll be in a Martian colony or something like that, and they'll be like, excuse me, your mother spanked you because you said a word, a word that has no inherent meaning except to express an emotion? I mean, I, you know, if, if you're, like, five, I think you shouldn't be able to say, or, yeah, you should be punished for saying, I'm gonna fucking kill you. That's, like, that's some strong language right there. But if you're five and you get, you know, like, a, your drawing gets, like, a C in your class, I, we well, you know, say fuck, why not? Cricket's head. It's a damage upgrade. Finally, something else to talk about. I'm, ooh, I'll go back for that. I'm interested, uh... To know what 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 people think about this, and it's not like I'm not a policy maker, nor do I uh, ever want to be, really. Oh wow, that is extremely lucky. Until then, um, yeah, you know, I'm like I'm not a policy maker. I uh, I'm talking out of my ass for the most part. You know, you should consider this like water cooler discussion at your at your workplace or something like that. Oh my God, we we got to crush more of these skulls, man. These are working out fantastically. We just got Dry Baby, a Two of Hearts card, and uh, and a Black Heart, all from the same room. Not to mention this, the second secret room as well, not that it's worthwhile, but still. You should consider this like, you know, the water cooler discussion with your people at work. There are people you work with who are probably as dumb as I am, and as a result, um, you know, treat me like you would treat them, is what I'm trying to say there. That was a really smart way to lose some uh, HP there. Anyway, let's move along. I'm just saying, you know, like, who cares? There are, I, but, I mean, there are people I know who don't really swear. But, I mean, am I wrong to think that they're kind of fooling themselves? A lot of people, they, 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 they tend to fall back on this logic that, like, uh, you know, oh, cursing is a crutch that... Uh, an unsharp mind has to use in order to make a point. I'm like, what? Well, I mean, I, I understand where you're coming from. Maybe if you're not cursing, that forces you to be more elegant. But like, are there are there like sprinters like that? Are there like, oh, you know, running really fast is a crutch that you use if you don't know how to run really well. I don't. It just strikes me as kind of like self masturbatory. You know, I don't swear because I'm smart. Is basically what you're saying. Wow, how about, you know, get a little bit of humbleness, you goddamn asshole. You're not all that. Only Amanda Bynes is all that. Anyway. It, and I, I uh, compared to uh, to many YouTubers, I think I, it's probably clear that I kind of keep the, the swearing to a minimum. Not because I think that, uh, you know, my videos are family friendly by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, that temperance card, we, I mean, we have no... We might as well... I don't know. Sorry, okay, we're, we're past boss rush anyway, so here's what I'm gonna do. Not that we need the money at all, but, uh... I'm gonna go back to our second secret room and throw the temperance card down there, but... The reason I, uh, I swear a little bit less is because I want those words to have some potency when I actually do use them, right? I don't want to be like, hey, you fucking welcome fucking bag, blah, 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 because then when I'm actually mad and I say fuck, you're gonna be like, oh, that's just how he says hello, right? No, I, I don't want that. I want, um... I want to be able to invoke kind of like magnitudes of emotions uh, depending on the circumstance. But whatever. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Cursing's weird. They're just fucking words, man. Especially like fuck. It's just a word without any like real inherent meaning except usually exasperation. I don't say you're exasperated, Timmy. Only adults over the age of 18 can legally say they're exasperated. Anyway, let's move along here. I don't know what I'm even talking about anymore, and that's okay. Doing great for HP. I know I should be using pinking shears more often, but it hasn't really come up, to be honest with you. Uh, 
Like, we, we haven't come across too many rooms that have been super annoying in that regard. I didn't mean to come into this room. Damage is good. Um, I would love to keep uh, poor Babylon active. Occasional Tooth is going to help out a little bit. Hoping we don't fight Greed on this floor. You know, standard requisite uh, Isaac talk. It's going well. I think we've got to do like a little... Whole, uh, little... There we go. Kill them basically at two hits. We also got Dry Baby on this floor, which is just crazy good luck. Probably the best possible payout that you can get from a skull. I really like Dry Baby. Dry Baby is a room that I've considered um, fighting Boss Rush for. Is it? Sorry, it's a an item. I've, oh, jeez, an item I've considered uh, doing Boss Rush for on occasion. Not that it's a game winner in and of itself, but it is pretty solid. Was there a Spirit Art down there? I missed. There was indeed. Not stressing out too much about the damage that we're taking because, again, we have the shear. Uh, not the shears. We do have the shears, though. Um, we have um, hmm. Uh, the relic. So as long as I don't take more than one hit every four rooms or two hits every four rooms, more likely, um, we're gonna be able to stay at the HP cap for now. We can worry about it a little bit more once we get down to the womb, but presumably we'll also have more items by then. This has been a pretty generous hard mode run, I'll admit. I actually don't even want to pick up that eternal heart, to be honest with you. It would ruin Horror Babylon, and we're probably going to be able to stay at the HP cap anyway. That's where we got to start thinking about stuff like that. Like, even if an HP upgrade shows up after the boss, it's two of hearts and devil. Devil's all right. Um, and there's another eternal heart right there. Uh, even if uh, two of hearts, or sorry, even if an HP upgrade shows up after the boss, we might just want to say no. Because the damage upgrade we get from Horror Babylon is probably more valuable. And if we get a deal with the devil, and it takes... One or two even red hearts? Who cares? We'll replace those with spirit hearts. And stay in Horror Babylon State, but have permanent Polaroid invincibility in addition to it. That was easy. Might as well take the half spirit heart. And I think we got everything done on this floor. Yeah. Start with the, the rage cage here. Annoying boss, I'll admit. Uh, I'm trying to save the, the devil card. But we'll use Pinking Shears against uh, against Mom. Devil card will probably save for a little bit later. I do think this is a run that has a uh, a genuine and a genuinely good chance of uh, of beating the chest. I should not have taken that much damage. Uh, sure, that's two extra keys and a luck upgrade in the form of Latch Key. Let's move along. Mom, fight. Pinking Shears? I don't I don't think Pinking Shears ever gets outscaled. Like, I think Pinking Shears stays really good through the entirety of the game. Like, I think it's still an item that's acceptable, or does an acceptable and appreciable amount of damage against Isaac and Blue Baby. Which is why I was pretty actually stoked to get it on the first, uh, first uh, item room. It's very good luck. We did get a deal with the Devil. We'll take that with us. We don't need the Spirit Heart. Um, free items, please. Wow. Okay, Goathead is great. Even though it can't give us that many uh, payouts anymore. Just because there's not that many deals with the devil left. Uh, but at least we can guarantee ourselves one on the cathedral now. And I guess it's just down to the next floor. Good run though. Very good run. You know, considering we got literally zero HP upgrades, you couldn't really expect a better run than this. At this point, I'm going to um, place a priority on red chests. Because we do still have a chance to become guppy. Man, I... What's interesting about this run, I always like to call out situations where if we'd, you know, made one decision differently, the butterfly effect would, like, totally change our... Well, I mean, we can't actually say the butterfly effect, because um, Miramax pictures will sue us. But no, we can't say um, the butterfly effect, because we don't know how the actual payouts were changed by the fact that we interacted with the environment, blah, blah, blah. But basically, what, what would have happened, if you think about it, let's do a little thought experiment, if we hadn't taken Guppy's collar, we would have uh, one more... HP, and I, I genuinely came pretty close to not taking Guppy's Collar because I was like, well, who cares? Like, it's just Guppy's Collar and it's going to cost us half of our HP. Um, if we hadn't taken it, we would have thought, hey, well, we're not going to get in the Horror of Babylon state yet, but we'll get in the Horror of Babylon state at some point in the near future. And then it never would have happened. Would we have had enough damage to, uh, to take out the enemies? To find ourselves in a reasonably good position here? Come on. I don't know. Uh, is the strangely enough? Seriously, dog. 
Strangely enough, the most important pickup of this entire run may actually be Guppy's Collar, even if we never end up using it. I guess especially if we never end up using it. All right, duty loom logs. Daddy long logs. Let's do this, buddy. Might be able to kill him before he pops his head down. We did. Deal with the devil, a damage upgrade. This is great, I don't want your HP. We're gonna fight Krampus. And I really, sincerely hope that he gives us Lump of Coal. Because I don't want to get rid of Pinking Shears, it's so good. Is Krampus' head good? Of course, but... You know, I think we gotta... Uh, that's fine, we don't have to worry about it. We have to give Pinking Shears, like, a little bit of seniority, right? Like, it's worked at this office for 25 years, I'm not just gonna kick it out on the curb as soon as, you know, some young graduate comes in. No offense to you young graduates out there. Okay. So we got a damage upgrade, we got Lump of Coal, which is a damage upgrade. And this run, um, it's one of the weakest, strongest runs I've ever had. Now that's an intentionally bullshit sentence to make you kind of scratch your head. But we haven't picked up any individual item on this run that I would consider game winning. But just through uh, the incredible kind of permutation we've gotten here, we've managed to make it happen. Uh, the, the combination, I guess I should say. This is what, what I, oh, no, 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 no. Just through the incredible combination of items we've gotten, we've managed to uh, string together a great run here. I was actually hoping for judgment, but then my brain turned that into demon judgment when I walked in here. I don't want it. Even though it would allow us to gamble on that, uh, did I say it would allow us to damble? Even though it would allow us to gamble on that, uh, you know what? I'll tell you what. Even though it would allow us to gamble on that Demon Judgment, I don't want that extra HP. Because it's going to fuck up our Horror Babylon state. I think I'm going to do that, actually. Golden Chest could actually be useful. Is it? Jeez, I don't know. I can't even really see what's going on on the ground right here. I think we picked up some extra bombs, though. There's a battery available on this floor, and, you know, lots of rooms, probably. So why not just let Pinking Shears do what it does? Look at how quickly this shit is moving. It's blowing my mind. It's out of control. Where you at, Pinky Shears? There you go. Cut him up. Oh my god. And Chubb, you don't stand a chance, man. You got an internal constitution like a roll full of tissue paper. More spirit hearts that I can't use. Well, I shouldn't say that I got no items that I would consider overpowered, because the relic is probably borderline there. But if we weren't doing any damage, the relic wouldn't really matter that much. Is this really the way we should handle this room? I always started out by dodging like an idiot. Apparently we just stand still, they just get into our kill factory here. Alright, I'm gonna need you to fuck right off, please. See, I'm not saying it so much that that phrase had a little bit more, uh, potency. I, maybe, I don't know, I'm not any kind of humor scholar or anything like that. Keys are coming fast and furious, and there's our, there's our boss room. I'm just gonna hope that we don't get teleported, but because I, I wanted to get a, a, a Shears charge. There is another one. That's it, though. Okay, yeah. Um, don't get teleported. Nice. All right, that was a bit of a risk, but it worked out. I trust in the Shears to do what needs to be done here. Uh, it's bad damage, but that's okay. That's probably, if I had to guess, the only damage we're going to take here. Because Shears is going to cut through any enemies that get spawned. And we're just going to... Yeah, Mom's Heart is just going to skip like five phases there. Uh, that deal with the devil has nothing. But the deal with the devil on the cathedral will provide us with some benefit. Curse of the Lost uh, really, really does not matter to me at this point. All we have to do is guess right on the first time, and then it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> Seriously, though. Um, more keys. Maybe should have played that key beggar a little bit. I thought about it. I didn't talk about it. But I thought about it because it's like, you know, it seemed like a smart play. But at the same time, I feel like if you play a key beggar on a, um, on a hard mode run, you know, be careful what you wish for, right? Very rarely do you even get a lot of keys, so I kind of wanted to say, you know, thanks for the opp opportunity, but no thanks. Anyway, it's not going to make a big difference uh, over the course of the run, it looks like at least. Now this is where I need to start creating a... Uh, that was terrible. Start creating like a, a checklist in my head. 
We're on the cathedral. Do I have left hand? If yes, hold the left control key like crazy. I do not have uh, the left hand. I can keep petrified poop. It's been fine for us. It's been good. Um, there's a tinted rock up there. Hard to see sometimes. We could use Samson's chain to kill it, but that's a little cumbersome. I don't really care. Ooh. Uh, the Algiz rune is a little bit better than the devil card. It doesn't give us invincibility for a whole room, like I originally thought. Uh, but it does give us invincibility for, like... Do we have a spirit art that we missed, by the way? This is the one case where, like, I would actually love to have the map so I can see what consumables we're missing. But uh, it gives you invincibility for, like, a full minute or something. It's something ridiculous. Uh, so if I if I just save this... It, I mean, we could use our devil card to, like, fight in a random room. But if I just save this and uh, have the ability to use this maybe... Oh, that was great. Thank you, Dry Baby. If I have the ability to use this maybe against um, Blue Baby, we'll be fine. We can probably kill Blue Baby before our invincibility even runs out. One of those runes that is um, very potent. I, I would actually say that maybe this is... Uh, you know how I get excited when I get like a sun card late in the game? I think this might be nearly on the same level. Sure, it doesn't give you full health, but... Um, you know, if you can kill the boss in a minute, or 45 seconds, or 30 seconds, however long it takes, then um, it's, it's basically just a, a free boss kill. And you don't have to use it against the late game bosses if you don't want to, I suppose. Oh, slow room. I got... That was so weird. Like, the bass kind of cut out with the slow music. It made me feel like the whole bottom just dropped out of this room or something. That was weird. Alright. Starting to not really be a huge fan of uh, Curse of the Lost, actually. That's what I get for shit-talking it earlier. Or saying, like, oh, you ain't so tough. It isn't. Kind of annoying, though. What a, what a weird run. If you had told me before this run that I would not get any HP upgrades. Well, that's not true, I guess, by the end. Because I did get some uh, some Eternal Hearts that I, I chose not to pick up. But if you had told me that I wouldn't get any traditional HP upgrades and asked me how I expected the run to go, I would say, real shitty. I think we're probably screwed. And um, I would not have been looking forward to the run. And yet, here we are, uh, actually doing extremely well. Bomb and two keys for a golden chest. Oh, well, two keys for a golden chest. Didn't really work out for us, but it wasn't so bad either. So Isaac is actually super slow, and uh, that that's going to make this very easy. The shots that he fires due to his slowness don't actually even hit me, which makes this pretty simple to take care of. Oh, come on. All right, Pinky Shears, get in there. Maybe we can kill him before he does that again. That's okay. Now, this happens to Blue Baby as well. We're in a fantastic position. Oh, we don't want to be there. I don't know. Did I hit one of those bullets that had just hung around for a little too long? I think that might indeed be the case. All right, next floor. This is going to be a win. Almost certainly. Let's see what our items are. Good. Concussive Tears, number one. Spider Baby or Sissy Long Legs and Robo Baby. I'm going to take them all. A lot of people won't be happy that I'm taking number one and lowering my range when I have Lump of Coal, but I like the increased rate of fire. We've gotten a lot of syringes. Our range is still pretty good. I know there's a difference between Spider Baby and uh, Sissy Long Legs. I don't care. <laughs> I like calling all spider items Spider Baby. Because that's just the kind of guy I am. Now our damage, you know. I'm not tearing the doors off of a double gate fight here, but we're also not really finding ourselves in that much danger either. You combine the fact that we occasionally get that slow. Alright, that's good. Uh, the slow from the broken stopwatch with the uh, status effects from concussive tears. Uh, these enemies are going to be pretty uh, disabled. For the most part, which is great for us. The world, yeah, okay. Good card. We're going to be heading upwards. Wow, this is dangerous. <laughs> Take Chubb, and then take away his number one weapon, which is his bullshit speed, and uh, see how this happens. It's going pretty well thus far. I'm trying to stay as far away as possible because we can get the, the lump of cold damage bonus still. Alright, this is a little bit more of an annoying room. And I don't think we're going to use Shears at all until we get to our boss fight, which is very, very soon. 
What a good run. This is just the kind of run that's like, uh, you know, it's like having a good ham sandwich. You're not going to write a blog entry and be like, the newest food sensation, ham sandwiches. But, you know, you can talk to your mom and she'll be like, what'd you have for lunch today? And you'll be like, I had a banging ham sandwich. She'll be like, that sounds fucking dope. That's exactly what's going on here. That's not how my parents and I speak to one another, by the way. As much as as much as we both would probably wish that to be true. <laughs> um, let's uh, let's throw a bomb down here. Maybe we can skip a couple of rooms. On uh, oh, that was bad. In vanilla. Oh man, Monstro's lung. I'm super excited for this. Hopefully, it didn't just ruin our run. That seems pretty sweet. Uh, in vanilla, you couldn't bomb your way out of those boss rooms once you got in. Monstro's Lung is one of those items, of, of all the items that I say like, oh, this gets a bad rap, it's fun. Monstro's Lung is the one that I think gets the worst rap of all. Because it's really, really fun, and I don't think it's nearly as demonstrably bad as something like Cursed Eye. So between number one and, uh, and our tiers upgrade pill, we're getting charged up real quick-like here. As you can see, the, uh, again, the Alge's Rune, come on, man. Look at the amazing length of invincibility here. Maybe not quite long enough to 100% finish the fight, but it might... It was. Okay, we still got a little bit more time afterwards. That was just an incredibly good, safe run, and I am very much appreciative of what the game gave me there. So we don't need to do Eve, uh... The run was on normal that whole time. Because I played normal on the NLSS yesterday. <laughs> oh, goodbye.